How comfortable with negative painting are you? If you're not feeling very comfortable, maybe this tutorial is for you. So today I'm going to be walking you through how I painted this little bluebird and I will be showing several negative painting techniques and at the end of 21 minutes you should be quite knowledgeable about the process. And a little disclaimer guys, I know that I promised an easy paint this week for beginners but this is what I'm giving you. But I was thinking maybe I would teach a technique and then next week, because this is a little bit difficult, next week you will be applying the technique and you'll be painting quite well. So let's begin with the process of negative painting. To begin, I got a picture of a little bluebird from Pixabay and then my apple or cherry blossoms or something I sketched out. They are flowers that overlap and that's how I get the sense of depth. Then I drew out the whole picture and I transferred it with a carbon paper and right now you see me squirting a little bit of dish soap and this is masking fluid in another dish. I take my little brush, dip it into the dish soap and then I can dip my brush into the masking fluid and it, the masking fluid isn't going to damage my brush. It's a little bit harsh and it dries quickly and it will cake up a lot of your brushes so be careful with that one. Okay so now I am painting the masking fluid very carefully over just a few of the flowers. The flowers that are going to be kind of in the foreground need to be really white for this perspective. Now this is an optional layer. You don't have to use masking fluid. I prefer it that way I don't have to be quite as careful when I'm doing the painting. And you can tell that I just covered just a few of the flowers, not all of them, certainly not all, that would be ridiculous. And also I didn't uh, mask over the bird so I'm just going to have to be careful and not paint the bird. But that's okay because the bird is going to be blue and orange and those are darker colors, unlike white of course. Okay, you can see that I have a sheen of water on the canvas, but the sheen is quite light. I do want a little bit more. Now I've probably done three or four layers or swipes of water and pushed the water around, made sure it's all even. The paper is just now starting to buckle, so I need to stop, and there is a sheen appearing. The sheen will help the paint that I'm putting on right now float around and I won't get any hard edges, hopefully. Now I'm starting with purple. I probably start, should have started with yellow, but I'm starting with purple and I'm trying to keep purple in more or less the upper regions. Purple and blue are colors that kind of push objects more into the distance. And then your brighter colors like yellows, pinks, reds, oranges will be in the more foreground because something that's further away, it loses, you know, those uh, brighter colors. So this is wet and wet painting. I'm trying to mingle some of that blue and the purple. And I've sped it up for you because you don't want to see all of the detail. But this is uh, magenta now. The colors for this painting are Carbazole Violet, Phthalo Blue Green Shade, Quinn Magenta, which I am doing right now, and in a moment I'll do the New Gamboge. Right now I'm doing the New Gamboge, and it is a yellow-orange, so I'm having a little bit of reaction to the purples and blues, and so I have to stop. I'm not going to put any more New Gamboge down, but uh, color theory says that if you have blue and orange on a color wheel, you will make kind of a muddy color. You'll get your neutral tones. And the same with yellow and purple. So this new gamboge is reacting with both the blue and the purple. So and that's why it's not as brilliant like a lighter orange. It kind of got a little bit muted and so I will use the new gamboge on layers. Okay, I got a little bit too much paint on my bird. And so I'll just lightly scrub a little bit. Everything is really wet so it comes up very easily. So lightly scrub a little bit with the brush and then tap up with my cloth. 
And this towel I'm using, I also picked up a little bit of the extra paint that was still floating on the flowers. Now I am taking my very good brush. I don't know why I'm doing that. I should use a scrubby brush, but I'm, I'm scrubbing with my nice Princeton on some of the flower petals or the little buds and I'm trying to lift some of the paint. Now this again, like I said, is very wet and even if it's dry, you can take a damp brush and scrub and you can pick up some paint. Now like I said, the phthalo blue is highly staining and you'll not get up a lot. The carbazole does stain a bit I think the new gamboge and the magenta pick up more easily. So I scrubbed out some paint from different sections all over the canvas. You only saw a portion. You don't need to see tons. And right now I am negative painting with just water. I'm laying down a sheen of water. Oh, everything dried. So now I'm on, I'm now starting a second layer. So I laid down a sheen of water again, painting around the little buds and the stems, and then after everything is quite damp, I drop in paint. Now I found that, you know, sometimes people just take a wet brush with a light amount of paint and paint it that way, but for me, I could paint a whole area with water and then drop in different colors, and it was so much more effective I could actually do a much neater job. Okay, you can probably guess it takes a lot of time to paint individually around each little stem and bud if you want to do a neat job. And so yes, it did take a while. Um, there's a color theory also as for what choices of color you're laying down. You don't want to put a purple on top of a yellow. And it doesn't mean that the yellow is already dry, but it's too much of a transition. So if you put maybe yellow on yellow or yellow orange on yellow or yellow orange pink on yellow, that's fine. But if you go all the way to purple or maybe a blue for this, somehow it won't be as beautiful to the eye at least not for this painting. Okay, you can see that I'm blending my colors. I put down the water and in some areas I'll put in maybe a yellow paint and then I'll add the magenta on the other side of that area that I made damp and the colors just kind of flow. It's a natural transition that way. I'm also maintaining a little bit of white above the bird's head and I probably could have retained more white. It's just, I don't need to paint everything. Okay, I'm just doing negative painting. You might want to skip over this part, but it's kind of interesting to see the colors on top of the, the under colors. Close to the bird, I'm putting a little bit more yellow. And then further away, I'm adding the more pinks. And furthest are the blues and the purples. Now, in the underpainting, there was a lot of purple there, but I want to brighten up the lower part and make it maybe pinks, a little bit more pink and less purple below the bird because I want to push more depth behind the bird. And that's why we're going to some louder pinks here. My flowers are going to be white, so I want to put a lot of color around some of those blooms. I'm adding some water to my paint little bucket and I'm just preparing my paints, get them all diluted so that all I have to do is dampen the paper and then paint. Right now I'm preparing the sketches for the negative painting. 
So I am just drawing some outlines underneath where some more petals or flowers or blooms could be. Then I'm going to paint around these and that is one of the things of negative painting. So, so far you know that one of the ways of negative painting is to use the masking fluid. Another way is to draw your shapes and paint around that and then you just continue doing that layer by layer by layer. On this painting I only penciled in one extra layer of petals but if I wanted to I could pencil in many many more. I just thought it was enough. I do a little bit of free sketching of leaves and petals in the in the lower part and you can see me doing that right now. And it doesn't really have to be specific when it's not centrally focused. So in the lower areas you can see like half shapes of petals, you know, poking through and that's, I'm just using the side of my brush and kind of pushing in the petal shapes. Right now I'm hyping the color in the central part. The top region and the lowest region need to be the kind of the duskier, the softer looks, but I want that center part to be really hyped in color and that's what I'm doing right now. It's just easier for me. I'm right-handed if I turn over the paper. Okay, so now I can dry this layer and we will take off the masking fluid. Or it's not fluid anymore, but the masking. And I still am going to retain masking on two or three little flowers that are overlapping on the bird. That way I can paint the bird with as much blue as I want and not worry about staining my flowers. This, I've now graduated to Quinn Gold. By the way, most of my colors are Daniel Smith. I am using the Quinn Magenta, which is a Winsor & Newton, and the Azo Orange, which is M. Graham. I love all of them. But yeah, these are mostly Daniel Smith colors that I use. So this Quinn Gold I'm using to kind of fill in a little bit of the center of the flowers. Not all of the flowers in the lower region, but some dots there, but the other flowers do need some nice happy centers. Then I add a little bit of Quinn Magenta, and that makes a reddish, kind of a thicker reddish peach peachy color and I add in that to the Quinn Gold dots and it looks pretty good. It's just kind of pointillism. I'm not really painting anything. I'm just dotting. And here is a small bloom that I'm painting and I'm trying to make it look like it's opening. So I'm actually not painting the petal itself but I'm painting around the petal. Negative painting. And here is another example of negative painting. So I'm painting a flower that has a stem overlapping, so I'm uh, painting around the stem. I'm painting the flower, and I've already painted around that flower to create that negative space. So this is what's really cool about negative painting, the space, the depth that you can get. Now I'm spending a lot of time on these two little blooms, these little buds, just because I want them to look good. They're right in the foreground. And you might be wondering why I paint and then lift the paint off with my little rag, with my towel. That's because if I leave the paint there, it's going to have a hard edge. So if I paint and then I pick it up and then I paint another, 
what I'm doing is I'm staining the canvas and I'm not really putting a lot of pigment there but I'm staining the canvas and so it it's a form of painting it's very light as I was looking at my paintings to make the flowers look like they're a little bit concaved or curled to give them a little, little bit more shape the colors that I use in very just like a tint for the water are New Gamboge and Quin Magenta almost entirely when it comes to painting the, the petals if the petals were under the bird for example which they are I could actually use the phthalo blue and the carbazzoli to paint the petals just a light glaze okay it's time to paint the little bird so first I apply water to every place where there could be some blue I'm not painting the entire bird yet and the only negative painting on this bird is to retain some of the lines between the feathers and my paint is pretty soupy and wet so I'm not doing a super good job retaining but you'll see me retain a little bit more so now that I have more pigment and there's less moisture on the on the canvas I'm starting to get a little bit more detail in my feathers and you'll notice that even though these blues are quite brilliant right now in three or four minutes they will have dried up and they'll be quite pale so I'll have to do another layer which is fine because layers add texture and this is transparent watercolor it's really good for adding a little bit of texture over a little bit of texture maybe changing the tones a little bit it's very good so right now I am painting the breast of the bird and I put down a yellowish there was a little bit of blue in that paint got mixed up I didn't clean my brush well but that's okay it still is quite, it still is quite bright and while it's still quite wet I'm putting in new gamboge and the new gamboge makes it look quite like it's got feathers and some of that yellow and new gamboge did mix with the blue because it was still damp that was ugh, that was terrible so I will have to clean that up later um, I could have blotted a little bit but I think the blue was too dry and as I said before it stains quite badly so now I have a little bit of green on my bluebird which is not cool I'll use some gouache later so I need more contrast now that my bird is quite blue but it really needs more blueness and the whole picture needs more contrast so I just added some little stems some more little red berries to the center of the flowers some little red stems poking up here and there and now I'm having the contrast that makes the eye very fascinated with the creation of this picture adding blue with more intensity and now I'm touching in a little bit of blue black for the eye and it's not pure black because I, I will hype the color later in some areas I'm just moving around and making last-minute adjustments and one thing I need to paint before we can say finished is the feet so I mixed up some carbazzoli no I mixed up some phthalo blue and new gamboge to create this pale green and then I sketched in where the feet were and then I added the carbazzoli violet to darken that green and that's what I'm painting right now the shadows around the little toes final touches around the eye you know the eye is the soul of the animal so the eye has to look really good well our bird is done so we're just gonna have to take off the last of the masking 
paint a little bit inside of those petals and we'll be finished. Um, for next week, we're going to be applying some of these skills, or all of them, about maybe how to use masking, so prepare that, and how to certainly paint negatively and design negatively. So you will be designing your own little picture. I'll show you how, and we will paint it together. So I hope this little bluebird tutorial was useful for you and you gained some information. Anyway, I will see you next week and we will practice what we learned.